Do you have any back pain? I do, yeah. I I have a slight uh, scoliosis, I think, and mm -hmm. then also I got an epidural when I had my daughter, so that didn't help my okay. back at all. Does it hurt at the epidural spot? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so tell me about your back pain. How often do you have it? Um, It comes and goes. It's interesting just because it's random. I don't know if it's like if I'm walking weird or mm -hmm. d depending on the type of shoes I have on. Um, but it'll last for a few weeks and then just kind of go away and then it'll come back. Like right now I'm kind of okay. Okay. Um, but like I said, I think like, especially if I wear heels, like it hurts a lot. Okay. So when you, when you, when it lasts for a couple weeks, it's every day for a couple weeks mm -hmm. and then it goes away yeah. for weeks at a time as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you get the back pain, do you get any pain down the back of your legs? No, I wouldn't say the back of my legs. It's primarily like just all up and down my back. Okay. Like sometimes I, it's like in my shoulders too. So okay. like that could just be stress. Do you get any pain down your arms at all? No. Any numbness or tingling in your fingertips? Mm -mm. What about your toes? Does your feet fall asleep ever? No. Okay. Do you have headaches at all? I do. You have neck pain? Mm-hmm. Okay. How often do you have headaches? Uh, not too often. Like if I don't drink water or okay. if I'm hungover. Okay. <laughs> Do you ever get dizzy, lightheadedness? Um, every now and then, again, if I'm dehydrated okay. or low blood sugar. All right, but never any, like, you're turning your head when you're driving or exercising or anything like that, and then you feel like you're getting lightheaded or about to pass out? No. Okay. When you have back pain, what do you do for it? Um, I usually sleep with a heating pad, which I know is, like, not the thing to do. I think it's cool. It's like the way to go, mm -hmm. um, but it feels good at the time. Oh, anything else? Ever take any over-the-counters, any herbs, Advil, aspirin, ibuprofen, anything like that? Every now and then I'll do like acetaminophen or something, but mm -hmm. I don't like to take medication if I don't like, if I feel like I don't need it. You know? Do you stretch ever? Do you exercise stretch? Not enough, no. no. And I was super active in high school and I stretched all the time and I think that would help me immensely, so... Okay, so when you get your headaches, where do you get them? Like, where where does your head hurt? In the front of my head. Okay, like my forehead. forehead. Yeah. Okay, that's it. No sides, top, back. Not typically. When you get a headache, does it last for a couple of days too, or how long do the headaches last? It's just temporary. Okay, and so where does your back hurt the most? Is it hurt in your neck? Is it upper back? Your lower back? It's my lower back, and I think it's like around my hips. Like sometimes, like my hips. When, what aggravates your pain? Do you find it's like when you're sitting a lot, when you're... Um, I notice if I have my legs crossed when I'm sitting, my hips will start to hurt and then I'll start to go up my lower back. So mm. I have to, I have to uh, concentrate on my posture. Um, and like I said, when I wear heels, they hurt. Did you ever have any major trauma to your back? Mm -mm. How long have you been having the back pain for? Um, like a year, three years, ten years? I don't want to say 10 years, but probably, God, I don't know, maybe in high school. I really can't remember when okay. it started. Mm -hmm. but so it was, kind of gradually over time, but yeah. never an injury of any sort. Yeah. Do you have any other medical conditions, anything that you take medicine for? Mm -mm. Okay. Have you ever had any hospitalizations? No, besides giving birth to my daughter. Okay, uh, that's fair. <laughs> Um, do you remember the details of your birth? Do you know if you were born cesarean or if you're born natural? I was born natural. Um, okay. How's your diet? It's it's okay. It's been better. Mm -hmm. I eat relatively healthy, but I still indulge. That's how okay. I like to say. That's great. That sounds fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Um, so how's your digestion? It's fine. It's normal. Okay. So good. have you ever been adjusted before? I have not, no. Okay. How do you feel about it? Nervous? Excited? Um, both. I'm excited, but I'm also super nervous. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I just, I don't even know what to expect, honestly. Like, okay. sensation-wise for me. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like it could be, like, relieving, but then also might be painful. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Chances are it's not going to hurt. It, okay. it almost never, ever hurts, especially well, if you're relaxed while we do it. Okay. And so we'll take our time. I'll explain everything that I'm doing while I'm doing it. So if you have any questions, you can stop me. Before we do the adjustment, I'll explain what we're doing. We'll practice it, and I will make sure that you're completely relaxed before I adjust you so that there's no pain, okay? Okay. Okay. Sounds All right, good. so let's do an exam. Let's see what your spine says, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Okay, very gentle. Good posture adjustment.
have some heat and some dampness here up in between your shoulder blades. And then it gets a little bit warmer on the right and the lumbar as well, but everything feels like it's on the right side, very right side dominant. Tender? Mm, a little bit. My masseuse uh, told me that the heat on my back was maybe an issue, and she also told me that naturally, as I don't know if it's parents all like lumped together or just mothers, but we carry our children on our left side so they can hear with their right ear, mm -hmm. and that's why I guess it's like a little. I don't know if you felt tension up on the left side or what, mm -hmm. but okay. it is a little tender. Okay, let's do this. So, like, turn to the left. Okay, I'm just gonna no, no. Keep your feet flat and just okay. like turn your upper body. There you go. I'm gonna push into your spine from here. Okay, let's go the other way. Here. Okay. So let's do this. Go ahead and uh, stand up. Okay, I'm gonna measure the glute fibers now, so you're gonna feel my fingertips on the back of your hamstrings. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna slide up to the gluteal fold. It's slightly lower on the right side. Looking from the top, it's slightly accentuated on the right, so possible a rotation posterior and inferior and external on the right, or anterior, superior, and internal on the left. Now bend down and touch your toes. Okay, there's really not much happening here. There's a little bit of rib pumping here in the upper thoracic spine. Go ahead and stand up. But there's really no curvatures. Who told you that you have scoliosis? Is it like a school thing? Um, when I was getting the epidural, the anesthesiologist did. Oh, okay. Were you they, laying on your side I was. Time? I was sitting in my... I think I had to curve my back too, so maybe that's how I saw it.
Nice gentle breathing. Fresh is okay? Mm hmm So good? It does feel good. Tender or ticklish? Ticklish. Okay, nice and gentle breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. Go let your shoulders relax, just sinking in gentle. Oh, that felt good. Shoulders sink in. Good. So same thing, breathing in. Good, and then out. Let your back relax, shoulders relax. Good. And this transition area. Good, and then just let your whole back sink into the table as you breathe out. Good, let your back go. Let this go. Point your toes straight down. Point your toes straight down to the floor. There you go. Okay, now relax. Good, letting the shoulders relax, sinking in, letting the hips come down. Okay, nice. So same thing here. We're just gonna bring the shoulder in this direction, the hip like this, and give a little push. So breathing in through your nose. Good, and out. Good, let this come up. Good, nice and gentle. Turn your head on your right. Okay, back to center. Now turn your head to the left. Back to center.
Okay, I'm gonna do a range of motion with your cervical spine now. Just try to relax as much as possible. Let me do all the moving. We're gonna adjust the cervical spine now, Leah. Okay. So this one's gonna do this. I'm gonna bring over your. I'm gonna bring your head over to the side like this, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna push like that. You're nice and relaxed right now. So all you have to do is just do exactly what you're doing right now. Okay, breathe. This is gonna be gentle. Good, sinking in. Let your whole body just sink in. We're just gonna push in that direction like this. Good. Another breath. Good. Lucy, goosey. I always get like tingles after you crack me though. Is that really? normal? Uh, it's awesome. Yeah, no, it's not. It's like a good awesome. tingle. It's not like, yeah. oh, you know, tender. It's, yeah, it's a little tender. Okay, there's one more left at the bottom. Then. Breathe in and out. Go let this go. Good. Okay, so let's adjust the right side now. Okay. Okay, same thing as last time. First, I'm going to check. Gently, just pushing in, testing. Six, five, four, three. One more time. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, two. A little tender right there? Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're gonna adjust the very top at C2, Aaliyah. Nice and gentle breathing. Let your head fall into the table and just kind of sink. Nice and gentle, loose, goose pushing. Let your head drop, let your shoulders drop. Good, don't push it, just let it go. There you go. Oh. That was crazy. <laughs> okay. One more. This is an organ manipulation. So we start with the ileocecal valve. This is the window in between the large and the small intestine. So we start with the ASIS here and the umbilical. Connect the two points and in between. Tender. Tender. Mm, little. Okay, now the pyloric sphincter is two inches above the umbilical. Okay, now breathing. Good, and out. Get in. Out. In. Out. In. Out. In. Just like a 
shoulders relax and everything. I'm going to push into it a little bit deeper. Do you get, is your cycle on time or are you on birth control? Um, no, it's not on time mm -hmm. and I'm not on birth control. Okay. The best way to get in cycle with the moon to first study its cycle and mm -hmm. then to go outside and look at it and you don't have to do anything else but just like kind of know like you know every two weeks there's a full moon every two weeks there's a new moon and start tracking that moon cycle and then just make it a ritual and do it as often as possible especially around the full moon a couple of days before the full moon a couple of days after the full moon you can find the information you know mm -hmm. and find out what time the moon rises and uh, it'll tell you what time it's coming up. And then anytime after that, you can look at it and just stare at it. You can breathe, you can sing, you can dance, mm -hmm. you can just, just connect with it. Because the moon is what drives the cycle. Mm -hmm. You're, You're a snuff box there. Do you have Native American in you? Mm -hmm. I don't need American Cherokee. Cherokee. Yeah. <laughs> My ankle cracked just as I did it. <laughs> Gentle. Shoulders relax. Good. Go let your back go. Goosey goosey. So I teach this class at Penn State and uh I only give out two homework assignments in the in the entire semester. In the entire and semester, oh my god. One of the homework assignments is to listen to Redemption Song and find the one line in the song. The directions are find the one line in the song that describes this class. Wow. There it is right there. That's just crazy.